What if one video a day was all you needed to grow your following by tens of thousands of followers? I'm catching up with a Launcher Box member that I interviewed a year ago, and she has exploded her video views. Come listen. Welcome to the Launcher Box podcast with weekly tips, tricks, and strategies to start, launch, and grow your subscription box. Now, here's your host, Sarah Williams. Welcome back to the Launcher Box podcast. I have a past guest with me today, and it's something I've been watching her do, and we're going to talk about it. I've been struggling a little bit in this area, and so when I saw what Betsy was doing over on her Instagram, I thought, okay, I can do this. We're going to talk about what she's been doing, what has happened since she's been doing it, and actually where we're at one year later. Bessie was a podcast guest of mine exactly a year ago as she was launching for the very first time. And we did an episode. It's episode number 39, and it's called Launch Tips with the Lettering Box. If you want to go catch back up on Betsy's story, but I'm so glad that you're here, Betsy. Why don't you, for anyone that maybe doesn't know you or hasn't listened to that past episode, why don't you just introduce your business to them and then tell them a little bit about your subscription? Sure. So I'm Betsy and my box is called the lettering box. My business is wax seals that are pre-made wax seal supplies and stationery. And then I also teach lettering in local workshops as well. And so my box is kind of a combination of that. And so you get lettering supplies and wax seal supplies, and it's all surrounding a seasonal lettering project. So we learn a new lettering style. We do a new project with each box and it's four times a year. So let's, let's take them back to a year ago. Okay. So you were getting ready to launch the lettering box, right? Do you remember like how that felt back a year ago when you were getting ready ready to launch it. Can you take us back to that, that time? Yeah, I felt pretty like nervous. Like I didn't know, I thought people would buy it, but I didn't know. And I didn't have like a set number. Like I had a goal, but I didn't, I like, I had enough stuff, I think to make 20 or 30 boxes. But then I was like, but I don't know who's going to buy this. Like, am I just going to have to resell this stuff? Like I felt very nervous about it and wasn't really sure how it would go. And you went through your launch and you ended up with 18, 18 subscribers. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's, it's one of those things like you just, you don't know what you're going to get when you're lobbing something out there the very first time. And over the past year, you've been working really hard. You've been growing your audience and you now have added another hundred subscribers. You've not only acquired, but you have retained. And so you're, you're over a hundred. I think you said you're at 118 now. So you have exactly a hundred more one year later. And so what I want to talk about is, you know, since that last episode a year ago, I started following you, right? So I started following you on social media and let's be very clear. I am not a letterer of any kind. I have okay handwriting and that's the extent <laughs> of things, but I'm fascinated by it, by any kind of artistic ability that anyone has. I love to watch that kind of thing. And so I was following Betsy one, I was checking up on her launch as her coach, first of all, but I also loved her feed. And so I've been following her. I probably like your, all your videos. Let's just say it's not creepy. I just really <laughs> genuinely love them, but I've been watching what you're doing and I've been struggling, especially on the Instagram. I am a very heavily a static post kind of girl. I love a good flat lay. I will put my products out there. I'll take the most beautiful pictures and I know I need to do video and I do video, but I wasn't consistent at doing video. And every time you're in my feed, it's a video of you creating your wax seals, you lettering something, you putting together the subscription box. And it's so beautifully done. A couple, a couple weeks ago, I went over to your Instagram feed purposely and I thought, let me see what her views are. Like, I want to look and see like your growth on your views because your videos are so awesome. And I saw one that had 10,000 views on it. The one that had popped into my feed. I thought, let me look and see how her growth has happened. So I went over to your feed and I instantly noticed that everything you had on Instagram was reels. 
there were zero static posts that I could find. And I was scrolling back quite a way. I thought, okay, this is interesting. She's only doing reels. And then I started to look and I went back and I was looking at the views that you have on your reels. And it was 30,000 and it was a million and it was 800,000 and it was 10,000. And then I started to scroll further and I found that like kind of one year mark and it was 300 and it was 600 and it was a thousand. And, and I thought she has really grown her video views. And so then I went up to the top and I thought, let me see what her follower account looks like. And you're over 30,000 followers on Instagram, which is not an easy thing to do. And it was a direct correlation to the way that your video views were building up. Do you want to talk me through what about that? When did you decide to just go all video only and what has happened with that? Yeah, I decided maybe two or three months ago, because I just noticed my static posts, nothing was happening on them. It's like no one would see them and I'd get six likes. And then if I did a video one, it would be like a hundred likes and at least a thousand views. And so I was like, I'm just going to stick with video because no one's seeing the photos anyway. And I just started making a point of anytime I make something or package it, I'm just going to record it. And it takes a little bit more time, especially with packaging things, but I'm just like, I'm just going to record everything. So I have lots of content. So I'm not like, oh, what do I, now I have to make a video. Cause none of my videos are of me Yeah, really like my face. It's all me making something because I don't really want it to be of my face. So they're all just of my hands. And so there's a lot of people listening right now that says, yes, Betsy, I don't want the camera on me. Please don't put me on the video. So you're going to hear Betsy say she has a 10 million view viral video and they don't have her face in them. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Just my fingers for a minute. Yeah. So it was about then that I started it and I've noticed for that big one that went viral, The thing that was different about it from my other wax seal making videos was that it was very short. I think it was about four and a half seconds where my other ones were ranging from like seven to 10 seconds. And the other thing is like, I like to build the video so that there's like a reveal at the end. So it's like, I put a text like the cutest leafy wax seal or the cutest fall wax seals dot, dot, dot. And then I'm making it. And then the reveal part is only a second and a half. So you can't see it enough that you have to watch it again to see it. And if you watch it twice, then the algorithm bumps it up more and shows it to more people. So I think that's what happened with that one. And I happened upon that by chance. Like I just made that video that way by chance. I wasn't like thinking of it, like I'm going to do it this way. So I get more views. Like I'm going to go viral with this one. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so after that, I tried, and I also posted at a different time of day, like at a different time than I normally do. So the next week on the same day, at the same time, I made the exact same video, but with different wax seals. And then that one now has like 1.2 million views. So not as many, but like that format of like really short, a short video with a really short reveal seems to work really well for my type of videos. So you went all in with the videos. Now, how many videos are you posting on a on daily? Are you posting daily? Yeah, I usually just post one and I have tried in the summer. I think you did a video challenge, right? And yeah. so with that, I was like, I'm going to post twice a day. I don't know. I was trying to post more, but I just started getting stressed out about it. And I was like, I'm just going to go back to one a day. I know I can handle that. And I won't get stressed out about it. So that's kind of been what I've done is just one video a day. I love it. I I saw that. So I was, I was glad that you said that, but I thought if we only had to make one video a day, like how easy could that be for us? And how much other stress and pressure would that take off of us? Because you can make the flat lay because, you know, it takes me a good 20 minutes to make a flat lay and, and do all the crazy things. But if it was literally just one video a day, and like you said, you're recording that content every time you make something. So then you just sitting down 
and taking the little one second bits of whatever you're doing and putting mm-hmm. them together. It's so easy to me. It's so easy to me in my brain that why am I not doing this? Like, why is this so easy? And I'm not even doing this. I can do this. Everybody listening can do this. What are some other tips about putting that video together? Are you finding trending music for that? What are you doing for the, the piecing? We already heard one video a day, make it short, make the reveal even shorter. So they have to watch the replay again, but what Mm -hmm. else are you doing for that video? I do use trending music. And so I'll go through reels and find music that I like. And I've noticed with mine, people with the stuff I'm doing, it's usually like slower music, like more like classical, because it's like these pretty little things you're looking at. Yeah, I don't know. So it's not as, not as many fast upbeat ones. I haven't been doing those as much, but they're all trending. So I always just make sure they're trending. Um, I guess the other thing that I'll mention is my videos. When I'm making the wax seals, I'm making it on parchment paper on top of my stove because that's the highest counter space, like the highest. So it doesn't hurt my back as much, but it's not like looking super pretty. Then the reveal is like, I put it on anyway. So that's like on parchment paper. Right. And so I'm making that. And so it's not like a beautiful background. And then the reveal, I put it on, what's it called? Like a foam core board Mm -hmm. that I have with different backgrounds. And I'll take that into my living room with good lighting and then take the video of the reveal. So just to say that the whole thing doesn't have to be like immaculately shot. It's kind of like, I don't know. And my wax stamps, like I don't even have the handle in it to make it look pretty because I don't do that when I make them. And so it's like, it's not as aesthetic, I guess, as maybe some people think it has to be. But it looks really beautiful. Like all of them look, you would, I would, I'm going to never look at your video the same again, because now I'm going to know if you're making them on the stove, but you would yeah. never know <laughs> that, right? Like you would never know that yeah. in your video as you're doing it. Um, and so are you hashtagging? Do you use hashtags in there? Yeah, I do. I think I have like, 12 or so. And I just, I have them saved in my notes on my phone based on topics. So I have my hashtags for if it's a wax seal video or if it's calligraphy or lettering or my box, and then I'll just copy those and put them in with the caption. Tell me the other, Oh, the other thing I was just going to say is I've noticed people like I've been doing this thing where I say yay or nay on this technique because I saw someone else who makes food doing that. And I was like, I'll see if people like this. And people love giving their opinion of like, yes, I love this or no, I don't love that. And most people usually like it. But if there's some way to put a question or something of like, give me your opinion on this thing I'm making or this technique I'm doing, I feel like people like to give their opinion. And so then that um, inclines them to comment. And that just kind of pushes it out to more people. It feeds Mm -hmm. the algorithm, the more engagements that you have. So tell me what you've learned um, through this two, three month experiment of the videos. What have you learned about your audience? What have you learned about your business? Tell me, give me some of your insights. I guess it kind of surprised me that people would like my wax seal so much that this many people would follow me or like it. And that's kind of exciting and like a little bit eye-opening of like, wow, maybe my business can really grow to something bigger. Um, So that's been really cool. Um, It's also, I've been getting more orders, which is great, but also like, crap, I'm getting more orders. I need to be more organized and make sure what stock is on my website is stuff that I actually have. It's just more orders than I've ever gotten. And I have a full-time job. So it's like figuring out, okay, like I can pack one time a week and just get all of them done. And then I'll send them out. And so I need to let people know it's going to take X amount of time to, to make your order or whatever. But so that's kind of interesting. I love that you say, crap, I've got more orders. (laughs) because (laughs) You know, it's, it's one of those problems that you want to have it, but then you're like, oh, well, I have to actually make this stuff. I can't just pull it off the shelf and send it. Right. And Mm -hmm. I, I know in our notes, as we were prepping for this podcast, you said that, you know, this has been a side hustle for quite a while and you really are starting to feel like this could become 
a full-time income. It could replace your full-time income. What are your thoughts behind that? Because I know there's a lot of people, I call them the weekend warriors, right? Like they're mm-hmm. working their nine to five during the week. They're hustling their business on the weekend or the evenings. And at some point, and I was the same way when I started at some point, there's something in your brain that tells you like, okay, if I could give my full attention to this, I could really do this. And sometimes that's scary because your job is like your security blanket. It was for me. Like I knew I had a paycheck. I didn't have to worry about it. If something Mm -hmm. happened, I always had a paycheck. Right. But on the other hand is if I don't do this, if I don't go all in with this one, can I sustain it as a side hustle or two, could it ever be what I know it could be? So tell me your thoughts around that. I think for me, I'm starting to feel, I already want to do it full time. Like that's in my heart. That's what I want. And that's what I'm thinking about. Like I'm still doing my job and doing it well, but I'm wishing I could be lettering or making wax seals during that time. Um, But for me, like you're saying, it's a financial thing that I want the security that I'm not willing to give up, like knowing that I have a paycheck coming for not knowing, yeah. like kind of go like walking into the dark a little bit and like, I hope this works. And so my plan right now is to like figure out how many subscribers I need to have to make a certain income to then replace it and make sure that the profit is what I need it to be. So I'm trying to figure that out so that I can have numbers to back up my decision to yeah. my job. Yeah. I think that I always do the subscription math right? Like, especially when I first started the business, you know, it was like, how many subscribers do I need to gain so that we can go on vacation? I'm like, okay, if I had (laughs) 20 more subscribers for the next five months, I could save this much money. And then we could go on vacation. Like everything was like this subscription math. If I want a new car and it's going to (laughs) be $200 more a month than my current car, how many new subscribers do I have to have to be able to afford this new car? And so this is how my brain worked all the time. When I first started my business, it was always the subscription math that I had to do. And so I want you to do the subscription math for what that would look like. And maybe it starts with, I'm, and this started for me, I started to work a day less at a time, like Mm -hmm. hold back my schedule a little bit. And and that was, um, the ability I had with the job that I had at that time, I started working a little bit less. And as that, and, and then started working more in the business. And as I saw growth there, I started to work less and less. And then finally I made the decision. So it was kind of like baby steps with me. I didn't just go Mm -hmm. all in at once. Um, but another thing that you mentioned in our notes here was, you said finding time to do all the things with this last box, I paid for help to pack the boxes and it helped me so much. Something that would have taken me days to do alone was done in a half a day. I know I need to start thinking about hiring and outsourcing things so that I'm able to grow. And I wrote an arrow back up to the paragraph that you wrote before that, um, because it's directly related. It's this I'm making money because I have over a hundred subscribers and I'm making, I'm selling stuff in my shop all the time. So I'm making the revenue, but I'm turning right around and taking the money that I make and I'm pouring it back into my business. And I don't feel like there's ever any cash flow left for me at the end of the month. Right. And so I I keep pouring it back into my business. At what point am I going to make some money? And I'm not going to hire anybody because I'm not even paying myself. Right. Like, so there's these thoughts that go through and I just want you to know, and everybody listening, like these are legit business owner thoughts. Everybody goes through these thoughts. I the same way months and months, almost a year went by before I could ever even pay myself something, not even like a regular paycheck. I'm just talking like, Oh, can I pay the car payment this month? Oh, can I pay the electric bill this month? You know, it wasn't until I hired my first employee that I actually was able to give myself a paycheck. And Mm -hmm. I was terrified because I can't even pay myself. How am I going to pay someone else? Right? Like that was in my mindset. And I was so far in the weeds. It was Christmas time of that year. I was so far behind. I wasn't going to get all these orders out. I was making everything myself still then. And, um, 
And I, so I had, I, I had to panic hire is what I had to do. I had to get someone in there in the month of December to just help me get all the orders out for that month. I knew that I could pay them for their time that month because I had all these orders, but I, I couldn't keep them. Like I, I couldn't afford to have an employee full time. And so I hired her as temporary Christmas help. And, um, seven and a half years later, she's out, she's my shipping manager. I never not needed her. I never, from that point forward, even after Christmas, did I not need her. And what I realized when I hired her, and maybe you felt this when you hired help to pack, it didn't just double my output. It quadrupled it. Like it quadrupled the amount of orders I could produce, the amount of products I could make and the amount of orders I could fill. And because it quadrupled my out, output, I was able to pay her. And that is the moment that I was able to start paying myself a regular paycheck. It changed everything for my business. And I know that it's a scary situation, but I'm telling you, as we go into this fourth quarter, it might not be a bad thing to test out temporarily and then see where that leads you into the new year. Because if you can grow this, if you're at 118 subscribers now, you're getting 10 million views on Instagram. Let's go get us some new subscribers. Let's get that to 200. Let's get that to 300. Because that regular reoccurring revenue is going to help you make the decision to be able to leave your full-time job, what you want to do, what you want, you want to pour your time into your business, into the lettering, into these customers that you have, your subscribers. Um, but until we can kind of get over the hump of you're maxed out, right? Like you're maxed mm -hmm. out with yeah. what you can do because you're working full-time and God, you need to have a life outside of that too, right? Um, you don't want to just pour all your free time into your business. And so we got to get over that hump. So I think you have an opportunity to do that. And the way that your social media has grown, I think you have a big opportunity to lean into growing your business full-time. And so the little coach in me, as I was going through your notes for our call today was how do we take all these new followers and turn them into subscribers, right? So what are you finding? You said that you're, you're increasing in orders and you're like, oh crap, I've got more orders, but what are you seeing with their habits from all these new followers and video viewers? So far, I think a lot of people just have questions. And I've been trying to, I respond to everyone's comments and stuff. So I get a lot of people with questions about what tools are you using? What is this stuff? How do I get it? I've had a lot of questions about international shipping, like 15 to 20 people asking for that. And I don't have that set up. And I didn't mention that on the notes, but that's something I need to figure out how to do <laughs> for the box, but also just regular orders, because I think a lot of my audience now is outside of the U S where before it was like only in the U S I didn't have very many outside. So I've had a few that have become subscribers and then the rest have been like one-time purchases and more lower, like not a big amount of spend $30 or less one-time buyers. And then a lot of inquiries about asking about the products and stuff, but then not following through with a purchase, but just asking. I also saw here that you said you get the best way that you get people into your subscription boxes through your workshops. So let's talk about mm -hmm. that a little bit. Tell me what you're doing with your workshops. Yes. Yeah, so I teach locally probably once a month and on busier months, like around Valentine's in the spring and the holidays, like two or three times a month. And then I just teach lettering, different types of lettering. I don't know. I have like five or six different workshops that I teach. And I just kind of rotate through them based on the season and kind of apply them to new things. So this last one I did was like lettering on pumpkins, which turned out really fun. And then I usually do some that are like lettering and wax seal workshops. So we'll learn lettering and we'll learn how to make wax seals, but it's like people, once they come to my class, they see how they teach, they either love it or they're like, this isn't for me. And if they love it, then they almost always get the box. So most of the people who are box subscribers. Like I know personally, because I've taught them in my class and some of them keep coming to my classes. It's like their fifth time coming to a class. They get my box. It's like we're real life friends, which is kind of fun. 
So my challenge to you is how do you translate that to online? Because there's only so far that we can grow locally in person. And you've opened up this whole new world of people following you from all over the country, all over the world, actually, that are asking you questions about the tools you're using, how you're doing things. They genuinely want to learn. They want to know more. So how do you take that in-person environment and translate it into an online environment so that you can build those connections the same way that you're doing it in person? That's super smart. Yeah, just doing online workshops then. Because I haven't really, I've done an online course in the past, but I, after COVID kind of stopped, then I was like, I'm doing all in person. So I haven't done any online, but I've had people ask about it. And so that would be good to do an online workshop that anyone could take. That's what I want you to do. Cause you're telling me your hottest leads, your yeah. subscribers are coming out of those workshops. So let's do them online and then let's start building our subscriber base outside of your local area, because it's the same yeah. me, Betsy, you know, I do this coaching week, right. And it was this aha moment that if people could hang out with me for a week, And they could see how much knowledge I have around the subscription box Mm -hmm. business. And they could see what kind of teacher, what kind of coach that I am. They would either say, I'm, I'm with her or I'm not with her. Like they're either going to say, oh, I love learning from her. She has so much knowledge. She's an expert. I want more of this. Or they're going to be like, yeah, this is not for me. And so it's the same way that you're saying in your workshop, they're coming. They love learning from you. You get to know them. They're going to get to know you in a uh, workshop like this, and then they're going to want more of you. And you can do it the same way that I do my subscription box coaching week. You can have lettering week and you can create some projects that you can, it doesn't have to be a week because I know you have a full-time job, but you could do like a, you know, a two day workshop where it's like an hour for two days. It could be a weekend. It could be in the evenings, whatever fits your schedule best. You funnel them in, you could funnel them into a Facebook group. That's where communities are built. I know it's hard because a lot of your followers are on Instagram, but it doesn't mean that they won't join a Facebook group to learn from you for a workshop and you give them a supply list and and that can even be on Amazon. You can send them over to Amazon to buy the supplies. That's what they're asking you in the feed. Anyway, what are you using here? You'll get your supply list from me. If you join my workshop, um, know exactly what I'm using. And then you do some teaching points of the things that you're making, you know, on your videos and then they're learning from you. You're making an income because you're teaching. So now you're making revenue that's digital, which is also going to help your cash flow. This is just a, a sales funnel. It's a sales funnel into them becoming a subscriber or them buying more things for you from you. And so I think it's a great opportunity to take what you're already doing so well as far as your videos and funnel it into another stream of income for you. That might be the tipping point for you taking this to full-time gig because it might be the revenue balance that you need, that cash flow that you need to be confident in leaving your full-time job. If it's like an online workshop, would you offer like a supply kit that they could purchase? You could totally do that. So I have a friend that she's in a launch right now uh, with her own little challenge workshop. And so it's optional. She'll, she'll give you the supply kit if you want to go grab them yourself. So that might be great for people in other countries that can just order it themselves. And you don't have to worry about shipping right now, or you can offer a kit and you only have X number of those. I think she sold 800 kits this week for her, her workshop. Uh Um, And so it's just make sure it's profitable for you because have to put all those kits together. And then when they sell out, they sell out. So the people that register first get first dibs. If not, they can grab the supply list and grab them online somewhere or locally either in their town. So what I would love to do, since we're ta- we're talking about your videos and, and all of that, I would love to put together a little plan for our listeners on how they can start to create videos. Now, I'm not a maker anymore. I used to make the things, but I'm not a maker anymore. So when I started thinking about how could I take what Betsy's doing and implement it into my product-based business, and it seemed very easy to me. It seemed very clear to me. 
And so what I did, and this is something that everybody listening, no matter what their product is, is I just made out a list of seven products. So we're talking about a video a day. Betsy's doing a video a day. Could you take one product a day and do some short videos? So I made a list of seven products and I didn't overthink it. I just went onto my Shopify site and I looked at the last like 10 orders and I thought I saw what people were ordering. I thought, okay, we can make a video on that. We can make a video on that. And, um, I gave it to my team in the warehouse. I said, just make me three to four short videos of this product. And they kind of looked at me like, what? And I'm like, if it's a purse, you open all the zippers, you change out the straps. Like, like let's, let's show them if it's a t-shirt that we're making. Cause we do still make some of our t-shirts or we're monogramming. Let's do the process of how we make that shirt. And so, or styling the shirt on a mannequin in different ways. So I gave them a list of seven. They came back with videos in an hour. We had seven sets of videos that all I had to do was go in and edit them and turn them into a reel. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to start a one video a day for the rest of the year. So all the fourth quarter, we're going to post one product video a day, and we're going to grow these video views, especially on Instagram, because like you, Betsy, when I do a static post, I get like three or four likes and it's like gut wrenching. Like I spent so much time on that photo. <laughs> Why am I getting three or four likes and no comments? Because people aren't seeing it. And you yeah. You recognize that right away. And what you've done is incredible. And I'm so, so excited for you. The way that you've grown your accounts, it takes years to grow accounts the way you did it in such a short period of time. And so I took notice. I'm like taking notes from Betsy. Like I I can do this. Everybody can do this. What advice would you have for people that maybe haven't done a lot of video, maybe they're nervous about video. You've already said you don't have to put your face in it. So what advice would you give them? What kind of tips would you give them? Just to start and just, I think a big hang up for me, like when Rails first came out is that I didn't know how to build them. Like I didn't know how to make text go away or come in at certain times or like how to even put it together. And so if you go back to my very first Reels, like they're really wonky but I just did them anyway. And I posted it and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. And so I think you just have to go into that, go into it with that mindset that they're not going to be awesome at first and that's okay. And I think also just have fun with it and be creative. I get a lot of inspiration from other reels that I see like food accounts, other like painters and artists, and I see what they're doing. And then I'm like, okay, how could I translate that to what I'm doing? Like, what are similar things that would carry across the board? And then just filming everything, like even things that you think are boring. Sometimes people like it when you put it together in a video. (laughs) Yeah. And so just record, just if you're packing an order, just record it or record it in different ways. Like sometimes I'll record it a time lapse of me packing it. Sometimes I'll record like taking, like showing the product and then putting in the box and wrapping it. And sometimes I'll do like a stop motion video where you just take a bunch of pictures of it moving. So it looks like it's moving like itself, but like, think about there's different ways to make a video about the same thing, if that makes sense. And don't overthink it. Right. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge production. I think one of my highest viewed videos is me opening a box of earrings like literally opening a brown box with earrings inside. And so don't, don't overthink what you're doing. Everything is content. The way that you put your videos together is really beautiful. And I love how you said you didn't know all of that. When you started, you've got to play with it to figure it out. You've got to keep trying, press all the buttons in there, figure out what they do. You can YouTube a lot of that. Like if you go to YouTube and say, how do I make a reel? And there's a bunch of videos with different tips and tricks. That's how I learned. I watched some of those videos on how to adjust the text and how to set a timer and, Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But you have to just practice and you're going to get better at it. But what I love here is that what you're doing is creating this giant video view audience. So when you're ready to run ads, you can retarget anyone that has watched three seconds or more of your videos. And so you can put a subscription box video or static post in front of all of these millions of people that have viewed your short videos. 
you know, they're interested, you know, they're, they're liking what they're seeing. People scroll so fast. If you can get someone to watch three seconds, they're interested. I know it doesn't seem like a long period of time, but now you can retarget all of those people with an ad to your subscription box or an ad to the wax melt or an ad to whatever you're selling and, and grab some sales from them. And don't be afraid to put a call to action in those videos. Don't be afraid to link your products. I saw that you have Instagram shop up. Don't be afraid mm-hmm. to link that product in your videos because you're going to make it easy for people to find you and to find the product. They don't have to go to the bio and click the link and shop around. They can yeah. click the video and shop directly from that video. So don't be afraid. You don't have to do it to everyone. And I wouldn't do it to every one of your videos, but don't be afraid to sneak that in there a couple of times a week. Like you can buy these wax melts here and it, it's linked yeah. right into your reel. So, and I want to see you do some workshops. Like, I think it's going to be an amazing thing for you. People want to watch that. People want to learn more. You can tell by the comments. And I think that you telling me that's one of the biggest realizations about the people viewing it is that they're asking questions about the process and the tools. So we need to, we need to deliver that to them and make them pay for it. So, Mm -hmm. okay. Good stuff. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. our check-in one year later from the lettering club, Betsy, if they are lovers of lettering or just want to learn, or just want to get the, the cute things from you in the mail, where can they find you? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram. It's at bgoods.lettering and that's on all social media. And then my website is bgoodslettering.com. And we'll put those links in the show notes today. Thanks for taking the time to catch up with me today. And we'll be back next week with another great episode. If the idea of creating a subscription box is swirling around in your head, I encourage you to head over to launchyourboxwithsarah.com, get on our wait list and grab some of our free downloads to help you get started. That's launchyourboxwithsarah.com.